Think Forward. Think Research Channel. My mom is a, used to be a special ed teacher. And um, she, when I was little, maybe about one or two, she just noticed that certain things I was doing was kind of slow. And she didn't really think anything of it. And then uh, my parents went and saw a specialist and they kind of thought that maybe something was also at a biopsy when I was three. And that's how they found out I had a muscular dystrophy. But it doesn't really manifest itself till you're around uh, 11, 12. So I was, as a little kid, I was pretty normal. Just maybe if I fell down, I took a little longer to get up. Like in fourth grade, I can remember Jim having to back up against a wall to kind of get me up. And then the other thing is um, you kind of start walking with your back arched. That's kind of balance. Anyway, so about... About fifth grade is when I, I actually couldn't walk anymore. So I started using a chair in fifth grade and um, a push chair, a manual chair, up until I was um, 12. And then I went to a power chair because I couldn't push myself around. And I was able to feed myself. Um, and then uh, eventually that became harder and harder. Um, and that went on until I was about 23, and then from then on I started needing it. I started having somebody feed me, um, and then, uh, so that was the next thing, and then the thing they talked about after that was my breathing, um, because that's the kind of the next muscle group they worry about. Hi, welcome to Talk Medicine. My name is Dr. Joshua Bendit. I am a pulmonary and critical care physician at the University of Washington Medical Center. I am the medical director of the Northwest Assisted Breathing Center. And today we're going to be talking about respiratory care of patients with neuromuscular disease, focusing on non-invasive assisted breathing. I'd like to welcome a friend and patient of mine named Jesse Watson who is a young man, now 31 years old, with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And uh, for those of you who do not know, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a genetic disease that affects the muscles and causes weakness, including weakness of the breathing muscles. Welcome, Jesse. Thank you. We first met about 10 years ago, um, and can you Tell us what was going on with you at that time in terms of your breathing. I had just finished with a bad pneumonia and um, switched over from Children's Hospital to the U and I found you through my rehab doctor. Okay. Were you hospitalized with the pneumonia? Uh, for about a week. For about a week. Yes, I was. And, uh, so that kind of was an indicator that um, something might have been happening with my breathing. Okay. And were you on any breathing support devices at that time or not? Um, not at the time. Not at the time. Okay. So you were starting to have problems with breathing, and not only breathing, getting air in and out of the lungs, but also coughing. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, I had a, a, a little harder time breathing. I'm just getting air in in general, and uh, my coughing was quieter than it used to be. And I was having some trouble at night. I'm waking up a little more frequently than usual and uh, other things like that. 
Okay. And before we move on with the non-invasive assisted breathing, can you tell them what you're actually using there? What is that mouthpiece that you're using? Well, like you said, this is uh, called non-invasive assisted breathing. And uh, basically I use a ventilator in the back that pulls in uh, out outside air and um, forces it down um, into my lungs to inflate them uh, more than I can on my own. Okay. So it's really taking over breathing for you when your muscles are weak? Yeah. Okay. Doesn't have oxygen or anything like that? No, just, just air. Okay. Just regular air. Great. So when you came to see us, we started doing some breathing testing uh, on your muscles to see how your cough was and how your breathing muscles were. Um, what did we start doing? Can you tell us a little bit about how we started treating you? Yeah, after we um, did the test to figure out that I needed some help, we started with um, nighttime um, assisted breathing with a thing called a BiPAP and used that for a couple of years. And then when other things started happening, we moved on to the next step, okay. which was full, um, full-time assisted breathing. Okay. So you're using a device at night to help you breathe which is a nose mask, and then during the day you're using mm -hmm. the mouthpiece, so two different pieces of equipment. Yeah. Okay. And you also use things to help you cough, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and what are, what, what are those devices? Um, there's a cough assist machine that helps me um, cough, just a bigger cough than I can normally, and um, um, a suction device that helps me with um, of, of fluids and other stuff in my throat that I can't um, get up as easy as other people. Okay, all right. So helping you to breathe, ventilate, cough, get secretions up and out of the airway, those mm -hmm. two basic things. Jesse makes a really good point there about the different muscles that are involved in uh, breathing problems, and I'm going to go through those in a little bit more detail. There are really two major groups that are involved in breathing function ones that control ventilation, that is getting air into and out of the lungs, and ones that allow patients to cough. In this slide, I show you the major muscles that are involved in ventilating or breathing, and those include the diaphragm, the external intercostal muscles, and what we call the accessory muscles of breathing, and these allow air to get into and out of the lungs. In this slide, I show you the muscles that are used in coughing, which are predominantly the abdominal muscles, but also include another set of the intercostal muscles known as the internal intercostals, and finally, the upper airway muscles that must coordinate during the cough maneuver. Now, I remember that at the time, before you came to see us, that you had had to make a big decision about your breathing. Can you tell everyone a little bit more about that? Um, when, I, when I was at the hospital, um, I was at Before the U, um, one of the last conversations I had with my doctor was um, basically two choices. One was a tracheostomy. A tracheostomy is a, a surgical procedure where a tube is actually placed through an opening into the windpipe, and it allows connection of a breathing machine, a ventilator, and also suctioning of the airway. Um, it's an invasive procedure, and it's what we would call uh, invasive ventilation when it's connected to a ventilator. What my doctor had said is, 